Hey guys, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's been a while since I posted a video, but we're going to be going through this garage door opener and putting a gear kit in it. I've never done this before, so uh, let's figure it out together. The reason I'm doing this, um, nothing really wrong with it yet, but this garage door opener is 15 years old and it's got plastic gears inside. And quite often those plastic gears wear out and you have issues opening and closing the door or just doesn't open and close at all. So this is more of a prophylactic uh, procedure more than anything else in this case. But quite often if the door uh, isn't hung properly or if that spring is broken and you continue to use the opener, you'll break those gears all by yourself. This is a pretty standard Chamberlain half horsepower garage door opener. Um, they're sold under many different brands and these kits are fairly universal. Uh, I picked this kit up on Amazon. I think it was maybe 20, 25 bucks. <clears throat> Comes with uh, this. Well, everything you see here really is a grease. Here's the part number for for this garage door opener. It's 041 Charlie 4220 Alpha. So, first step is to get the cover off. <clears throat> That's just a bunch of uh, quarter inch uh, screws. So, I got my nut driver here and let's take it down. And to take the cover off, there's a total of six screws here, 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 and one also under the light cover right there. So once you have those six screws out, the unit should lift off. Or not the unit, the, the cover anyway. And that's kind of what things look like inside the cover off. Not a whole lot to it. I was taking a quick peek. I think it might be easier just to take the whole thing down and work it on the bench. I probably could replace it up there, but I don't know. It seems like it's going to be easier to do down here. It's only a couple bolts holding it on. So it looks like maybe uh, half or nine sixteenths right there. Another one on the other side and a couple bolts holding that rail to the opener. I'm going to rig up something to keep that bar from falling down. Maybe I'll put a piece of wood or something or maybe a couple zip ties we'll see All right, I rigged up a piece of uh, copper wire just hanging between these two shelves here should be more than enough to hold I think it's 10 gauge wire now we got to release the tension on the chain so we can get the chain off the sprocket um, first I'm going to take pull the door disconnect so the door is loose and the chain should be a little looser and you want to make the chain longer by adjusting this turnbuckle here this will allow you to take the chain off. I'm not going to bore you with this. I'll go ahead and do this. Okay, you can see I got a nice sag in the chain there. I'm hopeful that that will allow me to slip it off that sprocket. If no, I'll just uh, loosen that turnbuckle a few more turns. Right now I loosened it uh, and it didn't cut the turns, but it might be about an inch or so spacing between the two nuts there. I left that one nut closer to the opener alone. I uh, didn't need to adjust that. Just loosened that one towards the door about an inch. All right, chain is dangling, as you can see. Uh, now I'm going to loosen the two half-inch bolts on top of the rail that secure the rail to the opener. And you can't really get to those with the chain on anyway. Right there, and there's one on the other side. Got all the fasteners loose. Got the nut off on this side, the other side too. Got that bolt loose, the nut off. Took all the wiring off the back, unplugged it, so it should be fairly loose right now. Uh, I'm going to take it off and hope for the best. All right, this should give you a better view of what we're dealing with. Got the opener on the bench, obviously. So what comes in the gear kit is this whole assembly, the worm gear on the opposite side from the motor that drives this gear. These gears aren't in terrible shape, but again, just given their age, I think it's probably time. Uh, and I guess there's a couple bushings in there too. So I've looked at the instructions. I've determined this is a type one opener because it has a limit switch assembly, which is this assembly here. Uh, which kind of controls um, how far up and down the door goes and whatnot. So it looks like we have to take out this whole plate assembly up here. And there's some, what looks like quarter inch screws from the bottom to do that. So um, let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, I removed all the 516 screws that hold the motor assembly in here, here, there, and there and the three screws that hold that sprocket assembly and the one's kind of difficult to get down there. The other two are pretty easy down there and over there. Uh, now the whole assembly is kind of weeble wobbling around. 
Uh, so now it looks like we could just take this limiter assembly. It looks like it just clips on like that. So it's two little plastic clips, slides out. Uh, and now we can start disassembling everything here. Uh, looks a little scary, but not too tragic. I'm just going to take it slow. It looks like there might be a clip of some kind that holds everything on there. Uh, looks like there's some bushings we're going to get to replace. Perhaps one there and maybe one down in there. Uh, they, the instructions talk about removing the capacitor, but just eyeballing it, I don't think that's going to be needed. Uh, if you do muck around with it, I'll just make sure you discharge it by shorting out the different terminals on there just so it doesn't short out through you. While you're in here, it might be a good idea to test it. This one says uh, 56 microfarads. If yours is significantly off from that, it might be a good time to replace it. So, uh, all right, we got that limiting switch off. We got that wiring harness there that probably just unplugs. So that's the orientation. The purple's on top, yellow's on bottom. I guess depending upon your point of reference. So that's off now. So what's kind of holding this in? Anything? Not much. All right, let me clean off some of this grease and we'll get a better look at it. It looks like there's a little plastic clip in here that holds wedges on that shaft. So I'm guessing if we just pull these out like so, that comes out like that. That should allow this gear to pop off. This whole sprocket assembly should just slide out the bottom now like that. Look at that. Pretty nifty. Not too tough. Two-handed operation. I got a couple of the teeth cleaned up on the old gear, and honestly, it doesn't look that bad. There's some very minor wear on the gear, but for a plastic gear, 15 years of service, I'm pretty impressed. Um, there's actually more wear, I think, on the metal surfaces. This bushing is pretty tight up here under the sprocket that holds it to this, this cap. Uh, that new one is much easier to turn than this old one. Uh, and it looks like there might even be some, there's some minor scoring on the shaft here where the bushing rides there. So yeah, the, the, the plastic parts seem to fare better than the metal parts. How weird. Go figure. The drive sprocket on top is showing some signs of wear. The camera's probably not going to focus too well on that, but the teeth have some decent gouges in them there. So yeah, again, not too bad for 15 years. This garage door is used on a pretty regular basis. I did notice that this the cap on the old one, the sheet metal cap, notice it has a split right there. The new one does not have that, so I'm not sure if that's normal, just a process of, I'm guessing that's friction drilled, that's just an artifact of the, the manufacturing process, or if that's a uh, cause for concern, but again, the new part does not have that. Alright, I think the next part, the next step is to get this bracket off the motor. Looks like there's three uh, nuts we have to remove. Uh, they look like maybe three eighths or so. Um, that will allow us to take off that wood here, right there. We probably have to drive out this bushing too. I think they gave us new bushings. I'll take a look. Okay, I got the whole motor bracket loose from the motor. You can see the bracket is moving with the shaft. It looks like there's a speed control up here. You see these little, this little plastic area with uh, cutouts? I'm guessing this sensor there can pick that up and can tell the, the, the computer or the circuit board down there, how fast this thing's turning. So that is held on with an eighth inch Allen key set screw right in there. Let's take that off. This plastic cap just pulls right off. It's not indexed on anything. So its position doesn't appear to matter. Hopefully these set screws are loose. So now in theory, everything should just slide apart. Always in theory, right? Let's loosen that one a little bit more. Two-handed operation. Everything's loose. So the collar comes off first, like that. Then this kind of, I don't know, it's a retainer. Then a wave washer, like so. And then a flat washer. So I'm just putting things back in that order on the bench here. So I remember how to. It goes back together and I'm guessing that's used just to provide some tension on that shaft so it doesn't wiggle around so this should oh we got this bushing now 
Let's see how this bushing comes off. That bushing is stuck on that shaft. That's probably not a good sign. I'm going to try using a battery terminal puller to yank it off. It does appear to be moving now, thankfully. The bracket just slides off the motor. Examine the motor shaft because that was seized on there. That's probably not a good thing. This gear slides off. Like so, the old worm gear. And the shaft looks okay. Maybe it was just really tight. It's kind of weird though. So it came off just like that with the, the long section aiming up, or I guess down if the opener is installed. Let's clean this up and take a look at it. Old and new gear side by side. Old in the left hand, new in the right hand. And I'll say again, very impressive. Good job, Chamberlain. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised these gears look so good after 15 years of service. Um, I don't think I've ever lubricated this unit before, so yeah, duly impressed. No visible wear on this thing. Just, I mean, there's some, but it's very, very minor. They'd probably be good for another 15 years of service. All right, so this kit actually came with a lot of the parts that I was saving for re saving back there, like that collar, the set screw, and all that. So it's cool. They give you new parts here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a minute and lubricate the motor. I like to use this uh, Tri-Flow lubricant. Um, I find it works pretty well on motors and whatnot. The motor is not not hurting. I mean, this, the shaft spins very, very freely, but I figure, you know, while it's apart, it's a lot easier to lubricate now than when it's back together. So I'm just going to, and this is not a ball bearing, that's just some, some bronze bushing or oil light, not really sure. So I'm going to let that oil soak in for a minute. Don't forget that back bearing too. Man, this thing is buttery smooth now, jeez. It's pretty impressive. Good stuff. I'm gonna replace all the bushings the kit gives you, so I'm using a socket here. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe a one inch or so as a receiver. I'm gonna press this bushing out with the vise. It pushes it right into the socket. You don't have to worry about damaging anything. I'm using a three eighths inch socket right there to push it the rest of the way out. Using the vise to press in the new bearing. I'm just going to get it started, not bushing rather. I'm going to use this socket, a smaller one, as a receiver on this side. I'm just going to push it in until it's flush. <laughs> Crap, hold on, let me get the air gun. All clean. Keep pushing until we are seated. We are seated. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but the set screws left some marks in the motor shafts, and that's going to prevent this bushing, the new bushing, from going on smoothly, so I'm just going to take some fine sandpaper and just kind of grind those down a little bit. If this doesn't work too well, I'll actually just take a grinder and grind it. It's too lazy to break that out. All right, I got those set screw burrs uh, sanded down. I used some 220 grit, I think I said. Um, bushing slides on there without too much effort now, so it's time to put, um, I guess, time to put everything back together, right? We replaced the bushing in here. Uh, that bushing slides on, so installation is reverse or removal. Got the new gear installed, the new arm gear. Got that drive bushing on this side. That's just uh, slips right on. Didn't have to use a puller or a punch or anything like that like I did on the last one. Uh, now we just have to reassemble uh, that set screw that kind of holds everything in place here. I think I just realized how this thing works. I was a little baffled because it was made out of plastic and I was wondering, can't be Hall Effect, can't be Variable Reluctance made out of plastic. But I see a sensor here that I couldn't see before and the one on the outside here. I'm guessing this is some kind of optical system where that plastic, as it rotates along the motor shaft, interrupts some kind of optical signal between these two sensors. Interesting. Okay, I got the, the sprocket assembly installed. I got two screws holding it in. It was a bit tough to mesh these gears at first. I added some grease and that helped a little bit, but I ended up just having to kind of force it. Uh, hopefully that's okay. Um, maybe they're just brand new and need to be broken in. Who knows? Uh, still need to install the limit switch. Um, need to install that that collar on the on the motor shaft. A couple other things, but we're getting there. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Here is the semi-finished product. The only parts we have left over are the parts uh, that the kit supplied, which is a good thing. I did notice there was an extra washer in the kit. I believe that's because there are different spacers. That, that actually goes behind here, and there are different thicknesses. So I just match the thickness of the new one with the thickness of the old one. And there are these new roll pins. I'm not sure why they give, gave us those, but maybe they're just not needed in this particular opener. 
So I think we're ready to assemble this back onto the ceiling and uh, give her a test with no chain hooked up just to make sure everything runs okay. Uh, we'll cycle it back and forth a couple of times. We'll put a lot of grease on the gears. Right now there's just a little bit on there. And then uh, if everything goes well, we'll hook it back up. All right, opener is installed, chain is still off. Let's do a test. If it fails, it'll be an epic failure on camera, right? It's turning. I guess that's a good sign, right? Put some grease on there. Okay, I think that worked. Cool. Ran it through a couple of cycles, seems to run just fine, so I think it's time to go ahead, hook up the chain, and retension everything. We'll probably have to adjust uh, the limit switch again, but that's uh, no big deal. Let's give it a shot. All right, got the chain retentioned, so everything should be good to go now. Let's give it another test. All right, made a mistake. Hopefully you don't make this mistake too. So right now, as you can see, my garage door is closed. But because I was cycling my opener and I wasn't keeping track of the opener thinks it's open or closed, the opener now thinks the door is open and is trying to shut it. So it's uh, running into the limit and stopping. So got to take the chain, run it so it thinks it's... Uh, so it thinks it's open, or I guess closed rather, and then uh, we'll do it again. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Hi, dear. It's a working. All right, so that's how you swap the gears in these openers. Uh, if you're not filming, I would allocate maybe an hour and a half, two hours of this job. Not too bad, pretty easy. Good luck, and I hope this video helps you. If you like this video, please subscribe. Almost forgot, I know a lot of you guys like model numbers and whatnot. This is a model number 3255, manufactured in 2005. Hopefully you can see that. Again, it's a Chamberlain half horsepower, model 3255.